Time for our monthly look at the state of the rural real estate market. Peter Newbold, GM of PGG Rights and Real Estate, joins us. And Peter, uh, you guys are creaming it. You've had your best sales month in a decade, and I'm talking about January. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Jamie. Yeah, look, it's been incredible, and it's sort of, it's not just one particular area. You know, it covers, you know, your your horticulture, your sheep, beef, um, you know, dairy. There's definitely been a little bit of a slow in lifestyle, but that's just really because of the stock. But overall, it, um, you know, normally January is a quiet month um, for rural sales, but yeah, as I said, um, it's the best in a decade. So yeah, quite outstanding, really. Kiwi fruit's going nuts at the moment. I remember being aghast when it cost you a million dollars to buy a canopy hectare of kiwi fruit. Well, now, um, wait for it. Uh, wait, but wait, there's more. You got to pay up to two million dollars. Yeah, well, I can remember Jamie a few years ago. Well, not even probably a couple of years ago. We're talking about God. It's just broken seven hundred. But you know, at the moment, if you want to get a good gold kiwi fruit, uh, you're basically paying somewhere between. 1.7 and 2 million per canopy hectare, um, which seems a lot of money. Uh, but then when you look at the returns that are being uh, generated, you can see uh, see why people are prepared to pay that um, at the moment. Well, let's have a look at, let's just quickly crunch the numbers because you've done some homework on this. You can get up to $300,000 per canopy hectare in uh, Orchard Gate returns. It's costing you 65k a hectare uh, to run it. There's a bit of fat in the system, isn't there, to pay interest on your um, $2 million a hectare? Yeah, and I think that's the, the key point, is that there's room there to invest. And, you know, of course, those numbers are at top end. Um, but it does give you a good idea of, of um, what's available there and probably gives you a little bit of a surety that, um, you know, you can, you can manage those payments if the market goes up a bit or down or whatever. Sheep and beef is still really strong. In fact, would I be would I be fair in saying it's stronger than dairy at the moment, and yet the returns are the other way around? Yeah, look, definitely it is stronger than uh, than dairy, and it's been solid now for you know almost a year, um, and we're still seeing a lot of interest. If anything, there's probably some areas we're lacking a bit of stock. Um, I guess the other equation that's come into it, there's still people, or a number of people looking at that sort of grazing piece of it. Um, the other interesting piece that's sort of come into play is that, you know, normally people would list coming into the autumn. We're seeing a number now saying, hey, let, let's just bring it onto the market now. There's demand. And also, as you know, in parts of the country, um, it's never looked so good with the rain we've had. We've probably had enough rain, but... Um, you know, when your property looks good, it's a good time to sell. Um, and the other interesting piece is we're seeing more, um, I guess, interregional buyers, but also, um, you know, North Island buyers who are wanting to come south. You know, you take a, a young farmer who's got a property, say, on the North Island, maybe a couple of thousand stock units, is looking to move south, and maybe he can pick up something within, within his budget that carries, say, 6,000 stock units. Um, as we said, Previously, the only issue there is the old uh, forestry, which sometimes uh, puts a spanner in the works. But other than that, it's looking really good. Peter, dairy returns are going to give $10 a good nudge this year the way they're going. And I know they're not going to stay there forever and we're on a cyclical high and I get all that. But uh, why is there so much reluctance to get into dairying when there's not for the likes of kiwi fruit? Is this just is this just government regulation? I think there's a... There's a lot of things there, you know, there's a sentiment out there, which I don't agree with, but, you know, then you've got all those sort of environmental, the compliance, there's all those things that are facing that industry. And I think that puts a little bit of a, um, a damper on it. And the other thing, too, is I would suggest at the moment also, some people are banking the returns. Now, you know, that that's great, but, you know, sometimes you've got to say, you know, the market won't be like that forever, so... Sometimes, you know, when it's in this sort of position, you probably, it's a good time to actually go and sell. But the other thing too, Jamie, you've got to remember is some of these properties are, you know, well north of 10 million. And, you know, that's a lot of money for people to find. So um, that's probably something else we need to bring into the equation as well. Okay, a really quick comment, and you mentioned it earlier, lifestyle property sales are slowing down. Why is that? I would have thought uh, the old Rona virus might have encouraged more people to head for the green spaces. I think what it is is there's a there's a shortage of supply, 
not so much people don't want to go, it's just there's limited supply. And I think the other thing, if you look at provincial New Zealand, there's there's a lot of value there and there's a lot of people who are wanting to move to what I call those towns outside the, the big cities. And, you know, when you think of places in the Waikato or Canterbury or, or wherever for that matter, it's not far to get to a big city and, you know, you know all the benefits rural towns bring community and all those sort of good things. So there's still a lot of interest, just probably we need more stock. Peter Newbold, GM of PGG Rights and Real Estate. She's hot out there. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Have a good day.